Hey gang, today we're going to do one of the most requested songs that I get, and that is While My Guitar Gently Weeps by the Beatles. Of course, Eric Clapton on that awesome and incredibly influential solo that doesn't sound that hard. Certainly the notes themselves aren't that hard to get, but it is really hard to bend and get it to sound the way uh, Eric Clapton does. Uh, to the extent that I can, I'm going to pass it on to you. All right, so we're going to do the solo now, uh, but we're going to do, at a later time, we'll do some of the fills and the chords and things like that, okay? So that'll be in a later lesson, but for now, the solo. Hey, uh, as always, if you like this one, give it the thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, subscribe for one of these every week. Okay, we'll see you in just a second. All right, gang, let's go over this note for note, at least what I played. First things first, you can download the tab from the link in the description below. It's going to make your life a little bit easier. Um, second thing, we'll just talk briefly about the sound. I'm obviously, I'm using a Les Paul, and um, I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Uh, I've got a classic sounding amp uh, aiming for that Marshall sound, like early, late 1960s Marshall. Um, a little bit of, a tiny bit of reverb, and that's it. Um, and a moderate amount of gain, so that I get a decent amount of sustain on the guitar. Now, uh, I actually don't know what Clapton used on this recording, but I do know that Clapton used lots of guitars before he landed on his famous signature Strat. Um, I know he started out, I think he even started out using a Tele, but certainly he was well known for a Les Paul uh, early on in his uh, playing career and um, moved to an SG with Cream 335 and then eventually went to a Strat. So whatever guitar you've got, <laughs> go for it. Um, you know, I chose to use this because it was a classic sound. Maybe one of you who knows what guitar you used, you can put it in the comments below. Let's go over the solo itself now. I'm going to play the whole thing slowly <laughs> without trying to burn up my hands on this one. And those bends, I'll tell you, a lot of them are one and a half step bends. They're going to hurt your fingers. All right, so anyway, let's give it a shot. We've got a few pickup notes, and it sounds like this. Okay, I don't know, that was probably about 70% speed. This is not a fast solo. The speed that you play is not the key thing here, okay? That's not going to be the hard thing. The hard thing is going to be the bends. All right, let's go over this now line by line. But uh, just as we do, uh, let's take a look at the harmony. Uh, this is basically a song that's in A minor, and so Clapton's going to use the A minor pentatonic a lot. Um, the chords over what he's soloing... Uh, over the solo portion are basically they're the same as Led Zeppelin Babe I'm going to leave you chords um, hopefully you can hear that okay A minor A minor with a G and a bass uh, D with an F sharp and a bass and an F uh, and then back to uh, A minor G and E uh, D and finally, uh, E. So that's the first part. I look at you all, see the love there that's sleeping, while my guitar gently weeps. That's that part. Okay, and then it repeats again, almost verbatim, but not quite. I look at the floor, and I see it needs sweeping. That's the same. Still my guitar, that's A, G, or A minor, G, and now gently weeps, that's a C, E. 
So, and that's what the solo is over, okay? So um, most of that, or pretty much all of that, can be handled by the A minor pentatonic, so that's what we're going to be playing it in. Uh, you can think about it that way. All right, let's go over it now line by line. Uh, this is all in your tab, so uh, I'm not going to labor it too much. Uh, a lot of it is in the bending, and so I'll try and get you as much of a flavor of that as I can. All right, so there's a few pickup lines right here. We're going to play up here in the 15th, uh, in the 15th, in the 12th position. Oh, yeah, before I do, I'll tell you the pattern that's being played over right here, and it's this one right here. It's based off of this chord, uh, this A minor chord, and uh, root on the 12th fret, 5th string, right? That's that one right there, and here's the pattern. Okay, so that's the pattern that we're playing over, if you want to think about it that way. All right, so we're going to play the following pickup line before we get going then, all right? We're going to start out here on the 14th fret, 3rd string. Play that one more time a little bit slower. All right. So you can see there's a bend there on the 14th. Now I've written it as one and a half steps, but if you don't quite get there on this one, it's okay. Because it's it's played very quickly, especially the second bend on that third string 14th fret. See how I'm doing that? All right, make sure you give it lots of vibrato at the end. All right, so that's that line. All right, now you get to the most iconic line. If you play this line a couple of times, it will they'll think it's right anyway, all right? So here it is right here. Okay, so what's going on there? Well, we're playing from the 12th to the 14th, and then we're bending up one and a half steps, okay? And doing it again. And then when we get it to the top, we're giving it an extra shaky vibrato and slowly bringing it down to earth, okay? Like so. That one and a half step bend is really the signature of this solo. So make sure you can get it, make sure you can get it fairly accurately as you're bending it up. All right, so that's the first line, two of those. All right, here is the second line. All right, this is a tough line. Um, so. Uh, the way I'm playing it is I've got a one and a half step bend. That's normal. The hard part about this one is you've got to go, that's on the that's the one we've just been playing, right? Third string, 14th fret. That's a one and a half step bend. You'll notice that I played it with my second finger, not my third. If you have a better way of doing this, great, awesome, more power to you. Uh, but... This is the way I've chosen to do it. I've got a one and a half step bend with my second finger, and that's because I want my third finger to do the whole step bend on the second string, 15th fret, okay? So that's a toughie to bend with your second finger one and a half steps, so make sure you give it lots of support. If you're gonna do it this way, make sure you give it lots of support with that first finger. Okay, then we've got the uh, third step, or third, uh, 15th fret, second string, full step bend. all pretty straightforward. Oops. Okay, then this. That's on the first string 15th fret. We're going to do a double bend to start it out. So it's only picking once. Okay, and then two more of them. Two more regular bends, okay? Again, that's 15th fret, whole full, uh, full step bend. Okay, here's the whole thing again. All 
All right. Here is the next line. Okay, we've got another one of these double bends starting out on the 15th first fret. You can actually hit it twice, doesn't really matter if you hit it once or twice, sounds great either way. So then I'm playing the first string 12th fret, okay, and then 15, and then second string 15th fret as is before I bend it up, okay? And then we do two of these. We don't do two of those. We do that. Okay. It's kind of a country lick. Um, you know, if you if you put this in a hoedown type of setting and have a little bit of a, you know, a different sort of drum beat or whatever, you're going to get a country of sound with that. Right? But here it's very, very bluesy and sad sounding. So um, basically what we're playing here is we're playing second string 15 bending up then playing 1st string 15 while we still have it bent, and then 2nd string 15, and bringing it down, playing the 13th. Okay, like so. And then we just do it again. Okay, that's that line. Tricky line, the timing is tricky, the notes are not tricky at all. Okay, here's the next line. Okay, very cool line again. It's got that signature bend on the third string 14th. We're going to bend up a whole step, right? Okay, that's the first part of it. And then we play this lick right here. To end it. That shouldn't give you any trouble at all. All right, here's the last line, and it's a really cool one because it involves a shift and a perfect note that gets us into the bridge. Um, all right, so anyway, here is the line itself. All right, so uh, let's break that one down. That's actually pretty cool. Um, we're going from this pentatonic position. So far we played everything right here. Amazing that there's so much just in this pentatonic position, which maybe you're not all that familiar with because it's not the standard blues box. Here is where we do a shift in the position. And that freaks a lot of people out, but it's actually right here pretty simple. We really only have to know two pentatonic positions. This one and our good old blues box right here. So on an A minor, right, that one, our blues box would be this. Now, we already know that, right? We know that like the back of our hand. Okay, so what we're going to do is just take that up a whole octave, and we get this. Oops, and ran out of room there on my Les Paul. Okay, so what's the big deal there? Who cares? Uh, well, Here's why I care about it, because Clapton's shift is really just from this position to that position. We know both of those now. So that's what's going on. So we'll start out by playing these two notes. Now we're going to hit a note and slide up. Notice that's the first note of this, or that's a note, the first note on this string of this position. Now we're in that position, right? Now the Chuck Berry lick. And then finally, on the 20th, second string, we're going to play this. Okay, so that's like a double bend there. Give it lots of vibrato, and it's a perfect note that leads us into the, into the bridge uh, where the key is changing. All right, so that's that. That's the solo. Uh, like I said, we'll do other parts later. Well, there you go, gang. Eric Clapton, 
and the Beatles, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Uh, one of the great, in my opinion, one of Harrison's best compositions and one of the Beatles' best songs, one of the Clapton, all-time Clapton solos that's uh, just fantastic, highly influential. And uh, anyway, it's a great one. So uh, take your time, learn it, and overall have fun. Okay, until next time, we'll see you on Down the Road.